Welcome on Texas Football Sunday morning conversation here with Jerry Hamilton. I'm Bobby Burton. Uh, Jerry was up at the Longhorn City Limits recruiting weekend. There was a scrimmage for the team as well. A lot of news and notes going on. Uh, but Jerry, welcome in. First of all, let's talk a little bit about Ricky Stewart, uh, the most recent commitment to the University of Texas. Uh, he becomes the fifth commitment of the recruiting 2025 recruiting class, running back out of Tyler Chapel Hill. Uh, congratulations to Ricky and his family. He was excited. Uh, when he made the decision yesterday, Jerry. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, this was one we kind of, we were watching, we were monitoring it pretty closely here. Um, you know, when I stopped by Chapel Hill earlier this year, it was obvious that Texas was a runaway favorite here. Um, and then it came down to when would he actually commit publicly? Um, and that happened yesterday. Uh, and obviously that was going to happen when his mom was with him at the University of Texas, which she was yesterday wearing her decked out in her Texas gear. Uh, and he committed at, 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 at the scrimmage. Uh, so they got in. Families got in around 830 or 9. They went through team meetings and position meetings. Um, and then they kind of they went over to the practice field. And then there was the scrimmage at 11. And he committed to Steve Sarkeesian, to Char Choice at that scrimmage. And then on the way back uh, to Moncrief Newhouse, uh, uh, his mom kind of ran into me and she's like, Ricky's got something to tell you. And that's kind of how it all happened. And uh, the video's out there on ontexasfootball.com, on my Twitter. Uh, but uh, Ricky Stewart, uh, it, it really was. He was living a dream yesterday. Now he committed to his dream school. Uh, his mom, probably her dream school as well. Um, so that, they were a happy family. And a running back that, look, uh, he, he's a slasher but he will drop his pads on people. Uh, he's a guy that can carry the load. He's a tough kid physically. Um, and the one thing the high school coaches tell you in East Texas is, and these are guys that have played him more than once. They said faster in a game than he appears on field uh, on film. So faster in the game than he appears on film. That's a really good sign for a running back. That is, that's very, very good sign. Hey, uh, before we get into the other recruits, uh, as well as some stuff that went on in the scrimmage, uh, we're going to recap a little bit of that. We want to say thank you to Joe uh, Brown, uh, your veteran mortgage professional. Uh, Joe's been doing this for 30 plus years, guys. He actually wrote my first mortgage ever. It is now paid off. 512-663-4744. Uh, That's 512-663-4744. Uh, Austin area, anywhere in the state of Texas, Joe's uh, able to uh, help you out. That's 512-663-4744. Four, four. We appreciate his sponsorship of On Texas Football. Hey, Jerry, I'm looking at a little bit more of this stuff and what's going on uh, as it relates to yesterday. And I, I caught up with everything. There was a new scholarship offer first. Let's go over that young man out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you know there. Yeah, a defensive lineman out of that Nashville area, Lipscomb Academy, uh, Amir Charles, um, uh, Amir Jean Charles. About yeah, 6'4", 6'5", about 290 pounds. He's a guy that has Auburn. Uh, George offered him at some point during the recruiting process. Um, got a couple of official visits scheduled. Uh, but he's a guy that, that Kenny Baker and Texas have watched for a while. Uh, they offered him yesterday. But the key was what he said about that offer was Kenny Baker is going to come watch me in person in May. So this is kind of what we were talking about uh, with Texas is, look, there's the guys, there's the D-linemen. There's the Brandon Brown who's committed, the Zion Williams, um, the Malik Autry, those level guys who Malik Autry did not come in this weekend. It's like April 13th. And then there's a bunch of guys that Texas is really going to evaluate in May. Kenny Baker's going to evaluate in May. And we'll see where the push comes uh, uh, to set up official visits with some of those guys in June and where Texas really goes at this D-line position because we know – the war daddy guys. We know the guys that are no brainers for Texas right now. Then there's some really good players that are all being evaluated. Yeah. I mean, uh, you mentioned guys that weren't in uh, Josiah Sharma out of California, yeah. uh, but DJ Sanders out of Belleville was in Zion Williams was in. And then you had guys like Mello Brooks and you had young man out of uh, Louisiana at defensive line also in, there were quite a few defensive line guys in, but that was the only new scholarship offer that went out across the board. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, there's a Friday offer from Javon Boggs, the receiver out of Coco, which we covered already. So there were two new offers in 25 that went out this weekend. Uh, by the okay. way, and, and one new official visit scheduled. Right. And that official visit is Jamie French, correct? Um, no, well, he was already scheduled. Aiden Anding, the corner out of Ruston, Louisiana, who Texas offered March 28th. 
Uh, he came in for a visit, first time ever at Texas. Um, he came in with his mom and his brother. Uh, and this guy's one of the top basketball players in Louisiana as well. He was at Miami last weekend. Arkansas midweek in Texas yesterday, and Texas wasted no time getting him on campus after offering. Sarkeesian talked to him on the phone Monday to ensure they got him on campus yesterday, April 6th. Now he's got a June 21st through 23rd official visit date set up. That's Texas big visit weekend. There's two, 14th through 16th, 21st through 23rd. But for Texas to schedule him there, that tells you he has quickly risen to a priority target at corner. That's interesting because I was going to mention him. So he's scheduled visit now. Uh, you mentioned Boggs uh, and then French. Those were two receivers that they were in. Boggs was in with a seven-on-seven team. Wow. French, um, Kate, Kelshawn Johnson uh, down in Hitchcock, DeCorian Moore, uh, Kalik Lockett. They were all wide receivers that were on campus as well. Uh, give us a little wide receiver rundown of, of what all went on yesterday. It sounds like they got together with uh, uh, Texas uh, quarterback commit K.J. Lacey and had a little conversation during the sideline kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a heck of a four by 100 meter team, too. <laughs> but Corey and Moore stayed. He got in late Friday night. He stayed over Saturday night, spent some time last night with Colin Simmons and some other Texas players. Uh, so really, they, I mean, while it's an unofficial visit, it's it's dang near an official visit, right? I mean, but the family, look, the, the mom grew up in Austin with the Lanier High. There's family in Austin, so they can come to Austin as much as they want. They have place to stay. They have family members there. But it was pre- this is pretty much like an official visit in a way for – uh, DeCorey and Moore. And, and, I, and he'll be back April 20th for the spring game. He'll be back in June for an official visit. I think the 21st through 23rd, he hasn't released his dates yet. Uh, but look, I think see, he, he's going to meet again with Steve Sarkeesian this morning before leaving campus mid-morning. Uh, so that's a lot of face time with Sark. It's a lot of time with the Texas players, former teammates, Colin Simmons, Alex January. Uh, so things are moving <clears throat> with the LSU commitment. It'll be a battle. Uh, but he's again, he's not scheduled to be at the LSU spring game next weekend. He's scheduled to stay in Dallas and play in another o, the OT seven seven on seven event. So uh, LSU probably will get a little nervous if that if that uh, maintains. But he'll take official visits to LSU, Texas, Ohio State, and Oregon. Um, some news there is, by the way, is um, Oregon's trying to hire Rashad Samples away from Arizona State as their wide receivers coach. So I don't know if that news is going to break today if he's going to take that job or where that process is, but that's something to follow as well with some other recruitments in the state of Texas. Uh, then Kelshawn Johnson, again, really good visit at Texas. He'll be back June 14th through 16th uh, for an official visit. He spent time with Steve Sarkeesian, Chris Jackson yesterday. He'll be at USC for their spring game on the 20th, has an official visit to USC the 21st through 23rd. And Texas Tech's a factor because his quarterback, good friend and Texas Tech commitment, Lloyd Jones, uh, there. Um, so Kelshawn Johnson's back. Jamie French, I think, had a great visit. Uh, he told C.J. Vogel uh, that Texas is now in his top three, Ohio State, which is most people consider the favorite, Tennessee, who's right there with Ohio State in Texas. And that's saying something because Miami, Florida State, they're all in the battle for the former Alabama commitment. Two-day visit. His family was on campus. He'll be back in June for an official visit. And then Kalik Lockett. I, the one thing about Kalik Lockett that's interesting is, uh, uh, you know, this is a full recruitment. And by full recruitment, I mean academics, Football, development player, development young man. I mean, you're spending any time with his parents yesterday, which I did, C.J. Vogel did, that's extremely obvious. This is a full recruitment. This is not a football just focus recruitment. Khalid Lockett's one of the best receivers in the country. It's a big part of the equation, but not the only part of the equation, uh, which is not the case for some uh, kids uh, just being real here. Uh, I think Texas is in a good spot for Kalik Lockett. The visits will continue. He'll be back June 21st through 23rd for an official visit. Uh, so four of the best receivers in the country on campus uh, yesterday, and some of those guys were two-day visits. There's also a couple of 2026 guys on campus. Oh, yeah. There was a number of big offensive linemen. I mean, I saw the picture of uh, Lamont Rogers, the Coleman brothers, uh, there was a, John Mills. There were some big dudes uh, on campus. We'll talk a little bit more about those tonight on the live stream uh, coming at uh, seven o'clock tonight with myself, you, uh, as well as Rod Babers. I want to ask you this. Uh, you mentioned Rashad Samples. Uh, he is, of course, the, the son of Reggie Samples, the head Duncanville coach. And that's why the concern there, uh, possibly if he moves from Arizona State to Oregon, does Oregon all of a sudden become a bigger player? in the, the Decorian Moore sweepstakes, so to speak. I, yeah. Whereas right now we think it's LSU in Texas, but 
things could happen, right? Yeah, I think Oregon would muddy the waters a little in that scenario, but I still think he's going to stay close to home, and it's going to come down to Texas and LSU, very similar to the Colin Simmons recruitment. Got it. Uh, Jerry, let's, let's switch gears. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, we mentioned Aiden Andy. I want to ask you about Cade Phillips. Yes. Uh, Texas has kind of, I, I, you circle, dot, whatever you want to call it, check, I mean, whatever they, they do as far as evaluation, et cetera, he seems to be a guy in the secondary, young man out of Fort Bend area in Houston that Texas has circled. And they want him, and they want him bad, and they're, they're doing everything they can. Uh, what what are you hearing in that recruitment? I know he was there yesterday as well. Yeah, he was there with his parents yesterday, as was Jonah Williams from Galveston Ball, the other guy circled, which we'll get to next. Uh, Cade Phillips, look, I, I think he's one of the highest upside prospects in the state in this class. He's closing on 6'2", 180 pounds, 10-inch hands, 80-inch wingspan, long jump 24-7. Uh, he really wants to hit that 25-foot mark uh, if he can this spring because he's an early graduate next December. So him to Corey Moore. This is their last track season for these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I think Texas is is in a good spot. And I, and I just put a story out on ontexasfootball.com this morning about some guys I thought were trending Texas, and he's one of those guys. Now, he'll be at LSU for the spring game this weekend. He was at AM last week, and where's brothers finishing up school this, this year? Um, and then it, he'll make official visits to Baylor end of uh, April, uh, but really LSU, AM, and Texas. And I think Texas is the favorite right now. Um, then Jonah Williams is on campus. They both got a lot of attention from Blake Gideon and Steve Sarkeesian. Um, uh, Jonah Williams from Galveston Ball there, the four-star slash five-star safety. He was there with his mother and father. Obviously, his father played at Galveston Ball. Some really good teams in the 80s played at U of H as a fixture in that Galveston uh, Ball and Galveston community. Uh, but Jonah Williams on campus, that was big news. He didn't he didn't attend the junior day, January 20th. And he is an Oklahoma lean headed into this spring, no doubt about it. And so Blake Gideon spent a lot of time with him. We even saw the golf, golf cart take him and his family over to the baseball uh, field because baseball is part of his recruitment. He's one of the top baseball prospects in the state in that 25 class. Um, and that's where Oklahoma's made some hay, and they recruited him at safety for so long as well. But Texas transitioned from linebacker when Chef Choate left to safety and it's a full-on safety recruitment by Blake Gideon and Steve Sarkeesian who were by the school in January so both of those top safeties for Texas in the state of Texas were on campus yesterday uh, Jonah Williams has not announced his official visit date to Texas but we do think Texas will get one in June interesting because I mean not only him but Kate Phillips I, I feel like they've got a, an eye on what they're doing Aiden Anding seems to be a guy that's kind of uh, you know pushed to the top a little bit at this point young man from Ruston that and, we just talked about it. And, well. I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fourth DB on campus was Dorian Brew. Yes. I, I was gonna say, uh, that was actually a surprise, right? Well, that, we had heard it, but they never confirmed it. Okay. So that was one that was never confirmed. He still hasn't announced his June official visit date. I believe it'll be the 14th through 16th because Ohio State's the 21st through 23rd. Uh, but that was big news to get him and his mom back on campus. He was at Ohio State for that big visit weekend last weekend. Look. LSU's in it, USC's in it, but this one may be just trending. Even though Ohio State has a lot of DBs committed, people are like, oh, he won't consider Ohio State. I, it's not going to work that way. His mom's in the track Hall of Fame at Ohio, Ohio State. Um, I know Corey Raymond's trying to really get in there. Obviously, his father uh, ran track at uh, LSU before he was an Olympian go uh, medal winner. Uh, but Texas is in a decent spot for Dorian Brew. It's going to be one of those big national recruiting battles, but it was great to get him on campus yesterday. He's coming off that Ohio State star-studded visit weekend. He comes to Texas and sees a lot of highly ranked guys as well. Some guys that were actually at Ohio State last weekend too. So Texas presented a elite visit weekend for Dorian Brew, just like Ohio State did last weekend. At linebacker Bo Barnes, the 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 one guy that you saw that was definite uh, a definite Texas offer yesterday. Yeah, no doubt. He was the linebacker that was there of note with his family. I think he continues to be a Texas lean. And if you're wondering how much Texas uh, wants Elijah Bo Barnes, he left with a uh, a Texas defensive notebook um, <laughs> that Johnny Nansen gave him. That He was the only player I saw walking around with one of those. Now, he was the only linebacker there. That may be what Johnny Nansen does in recruiting. But look, you aren't you aren't having a meeting like that, getting in the scheme and boom, boom, and and, and and taking a defensive notebook home unless you're very much a top target at the University of Texas. 
Yeah. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> and we need to talk a little bit about the scrimmage yes. uh, as well on this Sunday morning uh, before we get going. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to one of our sponsors, uh, Autograph. Uh, we're pumped for the big game in Ann Arbor. Autograph is as well. They would like you to have the chance to win $4 tickets to the big house against Michigan in honor of our four national championships here at the University of Texas, hopefully five in 2024. These tickets are retailing for $600 plus. Uh, so if you want to win them, listen up. Our partner Autograph is dropping a pair of tickets on April 8th at 2 o'clock Central in their app. All you need to do is download the app, refer one friend successfully uh, from Wednesday, April 3rd to Thursday, April 18th at 11 o'clock Central to be eligible. For those that are new, Autograph is where real Texas fans get unreal rewards by bringing fan content and communities into one place. Autograph is the first app that recognizes and rewards fans turning their passion into access and experiences. Scan to download the free Autograph app in the Apple Store and use uh, referral code on Texas. That's referral code on Texas. Join us and see where your fandom takes you, hopefully Ann Arbor this fall for $4 a ticket. Uh, thank you for their sponsorship of on Texas football today. Hey, Jerry, the, the, the next question I had for you is uh, surrounds a scrimmage. I saw the video and listened to a lot of the comments. I made a couple of calls on my own uh, as well about uh, the uh, scrimmage yesterday. Uh, your overall takeaway listening from listening to players yesterday, I want to go that direction, the players that were on campus or recruits. Well, DeCorian Moore mentioned Ryan Wingo. Um, that was that was interesting. A number of guys mentioned Colin Simmons. Had two sacks in the scrimmage, apparently. Um, a number of guys mentioned Jaden Blue. Uh, one other one other kid mentioned uh, the freshman running backs got really good movement skills. He was talking about Christian Clark. Um, so it's interesting how you talk to different guys and the offensive linemen. Obviously, they all noticed Kelvin Banks, right? They all noticed Texas being physical in the run game was one thing those guys said off the record a little bit too outside the videos. Uh, so yeah, I thought I thought a number of guys were mentioned. Uh, somebody mentioned Arch Manning having a really nice 30-yard completion. I'm uh, Mari Nyblack, I believe that was. So uh, the kids, they're paying attention, first of all. The parents are paying attention as well. Um, there were some comments there. Uh, Trey Weisner got some love uh, from prospects and parents as well for uh, having a really good scrimmage. And uh, also talking to uh, a couple of uh, high school coaches that were there. Trey Weisner and Colin Simmons were singled out by a couple of those guys right out of the gate. So it, it, I thought Texas showed well, um, you know, a defense got the first half of the day offense came back in the second half of the scrimmage from what I was told by multiple people. Yeah. I I've got a few notes. Uh, I, one note of injury note that that's important is DJ Campbell did not finish. Correct. Practice. Um, he had some ice on his shoulder, apparently according to one person uh, that was there. Uh, then I had some other guys uh, text me about what they saw, some, you know, parents, uh, et cetera, you know, high school coaches. Uh, Quinn crushed it, apparently, uh, was not missing. The running backs overall were electric. Uh, and that, he goes, that was all of them. Uh, he did say that uh, Cedric Baxter may have had the only turnover of the of the practice with a fumble. Um, said that Baron Sorrell, uh, again, just a continuous climb with him jerry again looks better and better it has been that way since the dawn of since he arrived on campus right. each and every year a little better he's like he's like the guy that's just being consistent pays dividends i mean he shows that true development uh good for him uh also uh you mentioned that 30 yard touchdown from uh, uh arch manning to nye black uh, someone said Nye Black is quote blazing fast. Yes, uh, so that, that's that's good stuff uh, as well. But all in all, uh, I heard it was a, a well-rounded scrimmage. Uh, offense did some things. Defense did some things. Jaden Blue was a star uh, in it uh, as well. Uh, just just from hearing all of it and listening to to what different people had to say and, and people I talked to yesterday. It just sounds like Texas continues to show to be a football team that is yeah. going to be one to rec be reckoned with because they have people in multitudes and at multiple positions. This is not a B. John Robinson focused team, right, Jerry? Yeah. This is not a receiver focused team well, like that, it maybe was last year. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? Or a defensive tackle focused team. This is this is rounding into one of their more, and we talked about it. 
one of the more re- well-rounded teams at Texas. And that's, I think that's proving out a little bit in the scrimmages and the workouts of, of what we hear from behind the scenes. No, no doubt about it. And I, the other thing was to add to that. Somebody told me that the running back room as a whole, the whole group, every running back was impressive. But the only way, by the way, the only way every running back's impressive is if your offensive line is getting something done in the run game, by the way. And that was, uh, talking to a high school coach, that was something that impressed him. Um, so, And then, I, then I'll, I'll also say this. Uh, when DJ Campbell exited that scrimmage, what we heard was Neto moved in the number one right guard spot. So, again, that tells you something about where Neto is at in his evolution or his development as a player. That wouldn't have been thought about last year at this time. That means the consistency of practice and his development is getting where Kyle Flood wants it to be when he can run with the ones one day at left guard when Hayden Connor's working at center. And then if DJ Campbell goes down, they slide him over the right guard. I mean, Neto couldn't have done that a year ago. So his development – the curve is headed in the right direction at Texas. Uh, a lot of depth on that offensive line. We continue to hear that. I believe Peyton Kirkland was a guy that may have not been taking part full uh, speed. Then uh, we also uh, were told that uh, Samaje Burrell maybe has a, a little bit of a right shoulder ding as well. Okay, interesting. Good stuff there, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, uh, uh, just looking forward. We got 2025s already. 2026, tell I, I I know I want to finish with this because yeah. Troy Hune is an interesting yes. prospect to me. Um, the quarterback out of California. Uh, there's been some movement, and this yeah. is important for everybody to understand, with various high-ranked quarterbacks in the 2026 class. They're already making decisions. One of them uh, just committed to Georgia, for example. So that may take Georgia off the off the radar of some big-time prospects. Hune seems to have a particular affinity, at least right now, with Texas. You think he's possibly getting close to a decision, or is this one that we may have to wait a while? Or are you just trying to monitor it right now as a as a reporter? Yeah, I, I think I think it's possible he he does something before the June when, when a lot of those elite camps are. Look, he was at Ohio State this week. He was at Texas. He was at LSU recently. Um, and, and Texas is a school that he really likes. Obviously, Sark's got a long-standing connection with the quarterback coach out there. He works with Danny Hernandez, uh, but his father was on campus. Interesting little piece nugget to this recruitment is uh, his mom is a high school and AAU basketball coach um, out in California, more AAU side now. His his One of his older sisters was a freshman at, the My, at Miami of Ohio on the basketball team. She just went in the portal. She's going to UT Rio Grande Valley. So there's already one in the UT system. Um, so there's a daughter that's going to be playing college basketball in Texas. Um, but I think outside of that, that's a nice little nugget for the recruitment, right? But I think it's the offensive scheme. I think it's the quarterback development. Um, I, I think I think Troy, it, talking to him, CJ and I talked to him a little bit. I think he can envision himself at Texas playing for Sarkeesian. Interesting. All right. Uh, that's going to do it. We'll have more this afternoon. CJ's got some stuff on the NFL draft with Bengal. One of our uh, uh, guys that uh, covers that uh, for folks. Uh, then also we have a seven o'clock uh, live stream tonight. Myself, Rod, uh, and uh, we're going to have a special guest as well uh, that we're excited about. A uh, young man that's committed to the University of Texas. All right. Uh, for Jerry Hamilton, I'm Bobby Burton. This has been on Texas Football, a little Sunday morning conversation. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Hook up.